Hello everyone. We have our news for the week, so let's take a look. Maintenance is normal time as usual. Ending with maintenance is the week one Final Fantasy 13 farm event, as well as the riser unit event. So if you need to finish those, you have till maintenance. And new this week is the second week of Final Fantasy 13. So we did have a little bit of a gap in between, but we are getting in the second week and they are not skipping Vanille. So we got two new units, Saz and Vanille. Login, 30 shards each for those. Banner shop, usual that we've always seen there. Some ability updates. So Savior is getting some more updates. Carly is getting some, and they're updating the other uh, seven star Vanille. And also they're changing the updates for the two Neo Visions to use Chris's instead of Master Crowns, which is a really nice change. So for both of them, they're getting updated to True Brave Shift, which is really gonna help. And then there's some limit and ability stuff for lightning. Essentially, her base limit will deal a little bit more damage. Her shifted limit is going to have, I think, 88% defense break added on to the 90 spirit break. Still going to imbue the five elements and do the five element magic damage, I believe. And some of her other stuff, I believe the, uh, the lightning imbue in the base is going to have a better boost on the team as well. So some good stuff for her overall. And then for Vanille, a couple of her things getting boosted. They're going to boost her uh, regular trust, which is her whip, just to have better stats, I think. And for Coralie, he's getting some breaking stuff and a little bit more damage. I believe his shifted limit will go up to 300. And I think uh, Lightning's base limit will go up to 300 base. Both can have the Titus's Garb 100 boost added on top of that. But True Brave Shift definitely helps both of those units. That was one of the biggest things to work around when using Savior, was she wasn't true Brave Shift, and all their breaking stuff is in the shifted form. New leader skills, so Hope and Noel. 100 attack and magic, 13 category only, and Yurisha is getting 100 attack and magic for Rebellion. Monthly live stream, so this time it's on September 18th. 7 p.m. Pacific. So that is a Monday. They have the usual link there. And they're also saying uh, Fujimoto is going to be there. So I wonder if they're going to be announcing something. Or if he's just showing up. Because he has time. Revision cards for the week. So both new units have the same card. And it's a pretty standard series card. So 100 attack and magic, 50% attack and magic, 50 limit damage, 500 attack and magic for 13 only. So fairly standard on the series card compared to what we have. I mean, the attack and magic part. It's nice that it's both there, but it's a little low. And then we have our events. So first we have a gun for Saz. So just like the other equipment stuff, Go through, probably four uh, versions of the fight to go through. They don't have it locked to anything on the banner. We'll have to see if they have a special mission that's going to be like 13 only or something though. But maxed out on the gun. It's a one-handed gun, 237 attack, 1500 attack for Saz only, and 100% dual wield, which is kind of nice. And then we're also getting a free unit, so we have a unit event for them. So we get Sid. He's listed as an attacker and a tank. Super limit burst units. Super trust, clothing, 88 attack, 44 defense, 58 magic, 39 spirit, 40% light resist. And just Sid will get 500 flat attack. Trust, accessory, 48 attack. And then when using fists, you get 50% to all stats, including health and mana. And then for him, Final Fantasy 13 bonus to get extra drops. So we can take a look at him on the JP side. So he's got sleep immunity and a little light resist to start. See, eight turn cooldown, only up for two turns. 250 defense spirit, 50% mitigation for physical and magic. No general in there. And eight turns, that's 
definitely like a last ditch effort to not die. We got 250 attack and magic, 200 limit damage on two turns, eight, eight turn cooldown again on that. So that's his buff for a burst, I guess. We got 130 machine killer for the party. For a single ally only, you can get the defensive buff plus 30% uh, mitigation to machines for physical and magic. And then we got one that adds in the killer and the attack buff to a single unit. Again, only two turns good there. We do have flat heal, mana back, and LB gauge, but again, one ally. He can add light to himself with a 30 boost. See, he's got his own buff with a 50x LB modifier, 1000 finish remove, three turn cooldown there. We got bolting, 200x modifier, and 250 mirror light locked. So, those, I mean, fine for chaining. You're not using those modifiers for damage overall. And then he's got a one turn physical cover. Let's see, double hand based unit. Okay on the killers. As a group heal, which is helpful. Let's see, as far as limit, we got 80 defense break, 200x modifier on the base, bolting chains, and the super still 80 break, 270. Bolting chain, he'll add 50 to that. So obviously his super is his best damage. So he definitely looks like a free unit. A lot of the stuff is not super powerful looking, but he could be useful in some rebellion lock stuff overall. Definitely won't be used a lot outside of uh, certain things, but as a free unit, always worth getting all the free units, I think. And then we have a raid event going there. Standard stuff there. We are getting some of the older stuff, but they, they're updating it, which is nice. So we get Vanille's bag, accessory, 55 magic, 30 mana. A little boost on that. And then we're getting two materials. So one is magic focused and one is attack focused. 30% attack and 50% machine killer or 30% magic and 50% machine killer. So the boosts on those are nice. I think those are only like a 10% killer at the moment. So at least they'll be use usable at that point. And then there is an explore event. So yeah, just 13 category for the bonus on the raid. And there is a bonus ex uh, explore event. We'll be getting some accessories and items from this. And those are getting updated too from uh, the graphics here. So the bangle accessory, 300 health, 36 attack and magic, 30% health, and then boost attack and magic when health falls below a certain point. Probably won't use that as much. Let's see, throwing weapon, 43 attack, 156 magic, bird killer and magic bird killer. So that's just 50% killer, physical and magic against birds. If you need the killer on a dual wield unit, could be handy. And then the sword, 121 attack, 161 magic, 30% magic. And then reduce magic damage taken every turn. So unless they boost that, I believe that's only like a 5% reduction. Something really low. But actually boosting the items and not giving us the old, like, useless items is nice. And then we have the banner itself. So the two units on the banner... And we are seeing the same type of banner that we just saw for Addison. The only difference here is there is two of them at the end. And you only guaranteed one. So just like Addison, it's 27000 to go through and get one of them guaranteed. You will need 12 tickets to Pity. So if you don't get the one you want and have to go to Pity, you'll have to run through the other banner four more times. And because... Uh, of that, if you have to actually go to Pity for the one that you want, you're looking at 63,000 Lapis, I believe it was, to Pity. So it's nice that you get the cheaper banner and a guarantee at the end. Unfortunately, you don't get to pick the guarantee. 
So if luck is not on your side, it's definitely more expensive. So Saz is an actual Brave Shift unit. Listed attacker buffer in the base and attacker in the shift. Not true Brave Shift though. He gets four turns and then has to wait three turns. Super is clothing, 103 attack, 52 defense, 38 spirits. He'll get 500 flat attack. And then everybody else will get the human and machine killer, 50%, and 50% attack when using a, a gun. Regular trust, materia, 40% health and attack, 30% mana, and 40% fire resist. Not bad to have some health, attack, and resist there, actually. And then Vanille is a super limit burst unit. Super Trust, two-handed rod, 129 attack, 223 magic. She'll get 500 flat magic. Everybody else will get the 75% bird killer and 50% limit damage. Regular Trust, accessory, 80 mana, 11 defense, 53 magic, 36 spirit, and nullify stop. So actually stop uh, nullification and decent magic overall, that's not bad. And we can take a look at them on the JP side. So first we have Saz. So he does get the rolling ant for fire that he can put on one ally. 160 machine killer, so that's EX2 for the fire amp, and then EX3 for his 160 machine killer. 8 limit to the party. He's got triple cast, so we got Mira and Bolting, Bolting non elemental. He's got some tag moves as well. So he's got a regular tag there, and then we have fire, ice, lightning, and water bolting, single target. He does have a nice little cooldown for buffs. And you get five turns out of it, seven turn cooldown, so you don't get full up time. But 300 attack and magic, 300 limit damage, 40% boost for fire, ice, lightning, and water. And then a 40% field boost as well. So that's a nice all-in-one buff for uh, any of those elements. He's got some unlocks that will fill his limit by 30. So he is a dual-wield unit. Now, the main thing I saw is he doesn't have the extra dual wield cap, though. So that's going to put him behind a little bit on damage. So his two unlock moves, he's just got 800x modifiers on him. One is 14 hit tag, and the other one is the 30 hit. And 800x modifier, even with dual wielding, it's not going to be as much damage as using one of the cards that we have, which even at this point, the cards are kind of low damage. He does have some nice supporter stuff. So he's got a dispel, a heal. He can imbue fire with a 35 boost to the entire party. Or for a single ally, he can do fire, ice, lightning, or water, but there's no elemental boost on those. He does have it on that cooldown now. He can imperil. All elements, 100%, just to one enemy. And he does have raise. As far as his base limit, tag move, 16 hits, 200x fire lock damage. So you can get that up to 300 if you give him like Titus's Garb or something, which isn't a high modifier for a limit. And then his Brave Shift. So he still has the fire amp and the killer. He gets a cooldown to boost his limit by 80. Absolute mirror chaining, mostly fire locked or non elemental. Still do wield in the shift, and he still does not have the extra 200% uh, do wield cap, though. And as far as the shifted limit burst goes, 35 gun in peril, 135 fired down, 300x. So he'll add 80 to that for 380. And then if you give him like Titus's Garb for the first five turns, he'll get up to 480 on his limit. So, decent LB modifier, but again, without the extra dual wield cap, he's going to suffer on his damage a little bit. So, his role in a team is most likely going to be this cooldown for the buffs and the elemental boosts and the field.
and then he'll be able to add more damage than a standard supporter with his limit burst as well as doing the, the buffs so an okay unit overall you're just not bringing him just for damage you're using him as a supporter that does more damage than full supporters and then we look at Vanille. So debuffer only tag. So we got AOE, 80% breaks for two turns. She can imbue Earth, but just the one ally with a 30% boost. She's got a cooldown, six turns, up for five turns. And it's a 40% in peril for fire, lightning, water, and Earth. So four different element fields. 40% in peril is really nice. 85 all break to one enemy for three turns. 30% death, which death part isn't going to be relevant for anything, but 400x modifier is whatever. She's got imbuable bolting, triple cast, Magnus, 89 defense and spirit break with 150 in peril to her four elements. Quad black in the kit is nice. Booster limit, 50x modifier, and 300% store magic. She can add lightning to a single ally. Again, just single with 30% boost. And then she's got the bolting move here with 70x modifier. So using that just if you want the, the 130 earth resist down probably. So double hand unit for her. Looks like her spell should get an extra 200x modifier. Spell wise, she does have a heal and a cure for a single ally. She can res a single ally as well. We got fire, water, lightning, earth, cast, wave only. And then she does have a 130 in peril for a all enemies. Regular limit burst, we got 30 rod in peril, 87 defense spirit break, 145 under four elements, and 150x hit. So not elemental, it's physical, so you can imbue it, just single finisher. And then the super is 30 rod down, 89 defense and spirit, 150 on the in peril to her four elements. She also does the 40% field, Again, physical, so we can imbue it, 250. Modifier, bolting chains. So overall, she's a pretty good breaker. And between the super and her cooldown and Magnus for the breaks, she can pretty much have full uptime as long as uh, the enemy isn't replacing fields on its side or curing itself. Because the Magnus and the field is both... Same modifiers and everything are on the super as well. So she won't do a ton of damage, but she's got some nice breaking and debuff support for sure. Overall, she's probably the unit that most people are going to pull for on this banner. And that's pretty much all the news we have. So pulling wise for me, I'm probably just going to use some 10 plus 1 uh, tickets that I have. I got a few of those. We'll just see what shows up from that for this week. As well as we will have another free summon from the uh, voting as well. But if you do decide to pull, uh, good luck to you. We're going to end this video here. Hope everybody enjoyed.